saints, T.I.s, angels of the most. <laughs> Hi ho! Gosh, you're looking swell. You smell an awful lot like <laughs> flowers. All right, so I'm back. This is the um, next couple of dreams I had this morning, November 6, 2022. And I believe they're a message for a lot of us that are being persecuted, a.k.a. they call us targeted, chosen by the Most High God, so we're hated by the world. So I believe that this is significance, significant for a lot of us. What I'm going to do is say the dream first. Then I'm going to come back and say what I believe Father is showing me that it means. Okay, so I dreamt my wallet was stolen. Let me get up closer to the microphone. I got two turntables and a microphone. If y'all are wondering why you don't really have anything to look at, I try not to put my face on here because this isn't about me, even though I'll say things that happen to me in the world of being targeted, persecuted, chosen by the most high right targeted by the world um but it's i don't want the focus to be on me also it's harder for me to not make a video an hour and a half two hours long like i used to do because when i'm talking i'll get into all these different things rather than if i'm not looking at the screen and i'm just going by uh you know i'll write down like things to talk about or if I'm reading a dream off, I'll read that. But I don't have any script. So if I'm looking at the screen with my face on there, I'm focusing on me talking. And it's distracting. So I believe that Father showed me a couple years ago that this, you know, is supposed to be about him. But I will come on from time to time when Father really wants me to get something through to y'all that's really important or I feel led just if I feel led and I will show my face from time to time but the reason why I don't have any kind of pretty thing in the background is because they've hacked into every computer I ever get every laptop every electronics and the only way I can get my voice to actually be heard is if I'm this far from the microphone on the laptop. So that's why it's positioned on the table and I'm sitting right by it. So anyway, I just thought if you're new to the channel, that's why you're seeing a window. To the window, to the wall. Okay, so here's the dream. I dreamt, this was this morning between, I don't know, three and 6 a.m. Okay, um, my wallet was stolen and some girl um, came and said she would look for it for me. But I knew she was the one that took it. The girl, incidentally, I'll describe her. She was very, very thin. Um, did not look real healthy, put it that way. She looked kind of unkept. And she had dirty blonde hair, like brownish blonde hair. And she was, she was shorter than me. I'm going to guess between like, 5'2 and 5'5, five five, somewhere around there. And she was maybe late 20s to early 30s, okay? So I knew she had taken my wallet. And I, and I said, oh, please, yes, please look for it. So I knew that if I looked for it, I probably wouldn't find it. But because she was offering to go look for it, that she's the one that would bring it back because... Um, I was downloaded already that she's the one that took it. So she left and she comes back with my wallet. And I was so happy until I opened it. And there was no ID or credit card in there. Debit card, whatever you call it. Okay. And my, whatever cash was in there was gone. But I was more concerned about the debit card and my ID. So I begged her please, can you please find my ID and my debit card? Um, and then I said, at least my ID, please. I will pay, and she wasn't going to until I said, I will pay you to find it, knowing that she had it. And she said, how much? 
and I was about to say a larger amount. I can't remember what I was going to give her, three, four hundred, I don't know. But it's like I was stopped by the Holy Spirit and said, offer a hundred dollars. So I said a hundred dollars. So then she started walking and I followed her because I'm thinking she's going right to it, right? And she goes around the side of this like alley and comes around the back and there's a chain link fence. And there's a couple of disheveled men in the back of this fence where she went through the gate of the fence. And I did not go back with her because I felt like I wasn't scared. I felt like I'd be intruding that that was their space. It was real messy. The yard was messy and there was clothes and stuff thrown around. And it wasn't the way she looked. It was a knowing that she was on some sort of drugs. And probably the men were too that were in the yard. Okay. So she comes back out. And she comes back out. And I think right as I was going to find out if she had given me the ID, I woke up. Okay. So I'll tell you what I think that means in a minute. Um, next, I was with an old friend of mine that I've known since I was a kid. Okay. And I'm not going to say his first name in respect to him because uh, he may be watching this and uh, I just don't want to call him out and get him gang stalked, basically. Okay. But I will say his middle name because nobody should know that. But um, his first name. So my old friend and me were boarding a ship or a large boat. And he said, someone told me to give, someone told him to give me this. And he handed me like some sort of a sack, like an old timey sack, like you would have coins in. Like what it reminded me of is the picture of when Judas gave, was given the thing of coins in that old timey sack. I'm not saying he's Judas. I'm just saying that's the type of sack, maybe like leather or it was suede, I think. Blue suede shoes. Okay. And there was a lot of money in it. And I didn't count it, but I knew it was quite a, quite a big amount. And then we were about to leave on the ship. And this friend said he had been given this for me as well. And it was a smaller amount in another bag. And it was pieces of paper that were white that were notes, like IOUs. And I knew there were $400 in it without counting. And then I was about to count it. And then I said, no, I'll count it later. We need to hurry and get on the boat or ship. Okay. Then I turned to my right and saw through a wooden wall. It was like a wall made of wood, kind of like a fence, but you couldn't see through the, there was no like cracks in the wood except for where a round, like it was a half circle, you know, from the grass and then cut out was in there that you could fit through, like a person could squeeze through. And I saw a beautiful beach. It was to my right, by the way, a beautiful beach with emerald green, bluish water and white sand. And I was so excited to go there. But then as I got closer, I noticed there were two lizards one big and one smaller, maybe kind of like iguanas, laying at the opening of the hole in the wall, blocking my path. And then I woke up. So here's what I think it means. Okay, so the friend in my dream, a childhood friend, so somebody from the past, right? Um, his first name, which I'm not going to say, but it means crowned with laurel or victory. It also means the Lord. His middle name, I will say, his middle name is Christian. So if you're watching, shout out to you, brother, um, Christian. And I believe this is a call for you, brother, to 
to keep repenting and turn back to the Lord. All right. Christian. Obviously, Christian, what do you think of? You think of believers in Christ. But Christian actually means, obviously, a re relationship with Christ, faithful, elect believers. Okay, that's amazing. So we have been given the victory. We're crowned with laurel. Like in the old days, they would have laurel wreaths crowned on their heads when they won these sports and all these things that they did back in the Roman days. And the wreaths, you know, symbolize um, completeness. And it means victory. And then the middle name means victory. We are crowned with our crowns of glory. Wow, thank you, Father. Okay. That we're victorious who are faithful, elect believers that have a relationship with Christ, Yeshua. So that was amazing. Okay. But the other part is interesting. So over the years, just recently, again, I came on and told you like, I don't know, I told y'all like three months ago, they stole my wallet again. I've had, you know, purses stolen. I've been mugged like four or five times. Um, I've had my apartments broken into. I've had my hotel rooms ransacked. Um, this has been going on since I can remember. They've stolen my birth certificates. Cops came in. Yes, this is real. Cops came in to my house. It wasn't my house, but the place I rented and stole my birth certificate. And even my dogs, my old dog Chewy's um, little papers he had, anything that was important, they took. They have broken in and they stole all my um, photo albums over the years. Anything that shows who I am. Why? Because they tried to steal our identity. If you're one of the elect, they tried to steal what Father gave to us, our anointing. So the fact that the main thing they took was my ID. Again, recently, it's just happened. So that's what I think that symbolizes. They're trying to steal what God gave us, if you're a believer. All right, the Most High God, not little g. Okay. Um, let's see, what else? Um, okay, that, I don't have a lot of revelation on that. It was just... Matter of factly, like they're trying to steal everything we have. If you're targeted, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They come in and steal my notebooks that I write stuff down on. Just unreal. They'll steal, in the past, they've stolen one shoe in places. <laughs> Just insane. And then what? what is the point of it? They're in hopes that we go to the cops, which are 100% part of it. Y'all need to wake up. If you don't know that, they run part of the show. They run it. FBI, CIA, DOD, DOJ, all that. They run it. And the Lord always showed me about that. And so they did a lot of stuff to me. But if you go in and say, I had my place broken into, what did they take? My birth certificate. Why would someone take it? Or uh, one shoe. You know what I mean? You sound like a nutbag. That's what they want. So um, anyway, long story short, I believe that because that was what was stolen and I wasn't worried about the money, it was my ID. Why did they take that? Why didn't she give me that back? What can they do with that? Because they're trying to steal who we are in Jesus and Yeshua. Okay. They're trying to steal our light. They're trying to steal our anointing. They're trying to steal um, our blessings from the most high. But here's the cool part. So I did not get the money back. In, I don't remember if I, got, if I was going to be given the ID back. Because I woke up after that. Then I went back to sleep. And that's when I had the second dream. What was interesting is. Now I'm being shown. Crowned victorious. As a follower. Elect of Yeshua. Jesus. By the friend that shows up. Nay. What does he do? He gives me a whole bag. Of money. And then. Extra comes in 
in the form of IOUs that equaled $400. Remember, I paid the woman that stole from me 100 So the fact that I got those two numbers, I don't know how much was in the big bag of money, but I knew it was like millions, I think. Millions! Um, the fact that the IOUs added up to 400 and I'd given her 100 what is that? We get back not double, three times more for our trouble. Remember, father works in threes. They say you get back double for your trouble. Not if you're being persecuted for righteousness sake. Not if you're one of the elect. Not if you're one of the 144,000. We're going to have just, it's going to blow your mind what father is wanting to give us and will give us if we continue to endure to the end. And it's almost the end, y'all. We're wrapping it up. So you see 100 is one third of 400. So three times more back, plus the extra anointing of all that Satan and his loser minions have taken from us over the years. We're about to get it back. And the fact that it was IOUs from an old friend means all the Judases that stole from us are gonna have to throw the money back into the bag. And wow, that makes sense. That totally makes sense. Like Judas, Judas with his little bag of coins, and then he knows he did the wrong thing by accusing Yeshua, who was sinless, and throws it back. But they didn't want it. They had already got what they wanted. Okay? And then what did Judas, Judas do? He killed himself. He hanged himself. A lot of these stalkers, that's what their fate is. They're going to take their own selves out. They've already been doing it, a lot of them. It's, it's very sad. Um, unless they repent and turn to Yeshua. All right, so that, that part was encouraging. But then it gets deeper. So what am I doing? I'm meeting an old friend. Who is an old friend of us? Who do some of us know from the very beginning? Father, Yeshua. Jesus Christ, he's waiting for us. Our ship is coming in. We're about to leave with our old friend. But what was to my right? You know, because we go to the right-handed path. Two lizards, which symbolize, I believe, enemies encamped around us, but it also could symbolize the lizard creatures, you know, the Sleestack, the reptilian race that try to block our path. Wood symbolizes righteousness, which it was a wooden gate or a wooden wall. And under it is a beautiful beach. That's the island that a lot of us are going to be going to in the spiritual realm. Okay. So I just found that amazing. And then I woke up. So um, maybe Father will give me some more messages on that. Okay. So now getting back to more of the thing with the lizards. Lizards, on a good note, uh, a lot of Native Americans um, have positive meanings about lizards. I'm not saying reptilians now. I'm not saying serpents. I'm saying lizards. The Navajos uh, see them as protectors who bring prosperity to the land. And then the Hopi, shout out to you, sister, Start, starts with a T. I don't know if you want me to say your name on here, but we're both connected with the Hopi prophecies, the Native American Hopi Indian prophecies, okay? Including the Blue Star Kachina, the Red Star, the Red Planet. I've done many uh, videos over the past maybe two to three years on this. So anyway, uh, the Hopi Native Americans see the lizards as sacred healing power. So we're healing the earth. We're shining light on the darkness, and there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth for the old heaven and the old earth that passed away. New Jerusalem is coming out of the clouds, and there is a healing over the land. And their aggression will not stand, man. All the wicked will be cast into the pit. They will not be able to inherit this earth. This was originally God's kingdom. He made this earth, and he's reclaiming it back from the Sleestack tribe of satanic <laughs> satanic reptilian freakazoids all right so next lizards also 
never give up and use all their powers and strength to escape when being what? TIs hunted. We are constantly being hunted. They will shed their tail to get away from a predator. Tails are symbolic of sin. So we shed our sin to get away, to go up and away from our predators. This is amazing, y'all. Also, lizards are in the Bible three times. But the one that I was guided to is to tell y'all is Proverbs 30, 28. A lizard can be caught with the hand, yet it is found in king's palaces. Lizards can be caught with the hand, yet they are found in king's palaces. And what does that mean? Well, I'll tell you what I think it means. Wrote a song about it. Like to hear it? Here we go. Um, we are the royals of Father's kingdom. So therefore, we have been made last on this earth. A lot of angels come as homeless people. Remember, Scripture says, Be careful in entertaining strangers, for in doing so, some have entertained angels unaware. Just like when Lot was guided out of Sodom and Gomorrah. I just spoke about this in the last video. Check it out today, earlier. Um, which I believe I saw symbolically also in a dream this morning. Sodom and Gomorrah, Mystery Babylon, America, the not so great now, burning. Um, but Lot was guided out by who? Angels that came as men. And what did all the reprobate, sick, nasty uh, perverts d try to do. They wanted to be with them intimately, be with men. These are men doing this, and we're seeing that right now. Sodom and Gomorrah. So the royals on this earth, t what they call the royals, the slea stacks, the reptilians, are like the royals in London. Father told me since the beginning of this year, London Bridge is falling down. Ding dong, the witch is dead. The lizard reptilian, and funny, her name is Elizabeth. What is the nickname for Elizabeth? Lizzie. Lizzie the lion lizard. The lizard kingdom is falling down, including the reptilian freaks that run the Vatican. They're done, son. But they profess to be the royals, the elite. Look at us. They have to wear their big, goofy-looking hats. What is that even about? Almost hitting other people in the face when they go, go about their day, dressed in their whole garb and all their jewelry and all their pins and stuff. That is not Father's kingdom. We are beings of light. We're not going to have to worry about any of that stuff. Most of us, all of us on this channel that are... The 144, we never have worried about it. The, those that are going to be saved will not have to worry about that. Okay? Because we're all equal in Father's kingdom. Although some are given higher stature, like some are going to be um, kings and queens, things like that, generals and, and lieutenants, regulators. But we're all, we all have a special... Um, gift and ability, and we're all going to love each other as ourselves. We're not going to lie. We're not going to have any kind of hate or animosity or jealousy, envy, pride. We're not going to wish for things. Whatever we need, Father is giving to us already on this earth if we obey him. But up there, we're going to have mansions in heaven. I've told Father over and over again because I've never had a house and I've had to move for so long now, but Yeshua did too. And so did all the disciples. So we're blessed if you're made homeless and isolated. But I just want a shack in the back, clickety clack, I tell father. And I mean, even if I slept in the grass, if I make it up there, I pray that I'm worthy to make it up there. I'll be so happy. We won't have to see these list cards anymore. They're going into the lake of fire. Right, but the whole point is, uh, it says in Proverbs thirty twenty eight, a lizard can be caught with the hand, yet it is found in king's palaces. Okay, 
So lizards in the Bible are sent to spy on the royals, the elect, okay? We are the elect in Father's kingdom. So we have lizards all around us, reptilian race, monsters, I call them, seeking to spy us out and, and rid, rid, rid the land of us because we see the truth and we see right through them. They can't fool us. And you know what else? They stank. Okay, so <laughs> let's see what else. I found it interesting that lizards never give up and they use all their power and strength to escape when being hunted. And we're being hunted by the enemies of Yeshua HaMashiach. And they shed their tail to get away. Tails are symbolic of sin. So we're shedding our sin to go up. All right. Is there anything else? Because I've got some more to tell y'all. Oh, okay. And then the fact that in the dream, getting back to the dream, I'm going to a ship, about to leave on a ship. That signifies the chariots of fire, our angels on standby, the holy angels above us. Our ships are waiting to pick us up. We're, we're out of here, y'all. It's, it's any time now. So I'm going to come back on in a little bit. Let's see. I'll come back on in a little bit um, and tell y'all some more things going on. I'm trying to make this. I try to make it under 20, but I'm doing better. I'm at 26. Six minutes. Six minutes. Six minutes. Dougie Fresh it on. I love y'all. Come back on later and check out some more. I got some more exciting things to tell y'all that aren't uh, dream revelations. Over and out.